Hi, today we're going to be making this origami unicorn. Um, I actually really like this design, and because of that, I decided to dress up as a unicorn today. Uh, the reason why I really like this design is because, I mean, it's kind of complex, but it's not the most, uh, it's not the most difficult or intricate origami unicorn out there, and even so, it's really pleasant to look at and it's also very versatile. Um, you can easily make it realistic or you can make it uh, simplistic and cute, um, but it's also r genuinely really fun to fold in my opinion. I've made several of these and I hope that you enjoy this tutorial. Good luck. So just for fun, I made this model with a couple sort of special papers. This one here is made with mulberry foil sandwich paper, and this one is made with iridescent paper. Special paper is not needed, however. Um, this is how it looks with just 24 centimeter kami, and that's what I'll be using for the tutorial. I might switch to an, a large paper later in the tutorial. So we're going to start with the color of the mane and the tail face up, and the color of the body face down. So we're going to start with a di diagonal valley fold in half, like this. And then we're going to bring these adjacent edges to that crease we just made. Forming a kite base. And the way I like to do this is to make this a mountain fold. just because it's easier to feel for it and make it more accurate. Next, we're going to divide this section in half vertically. So, um, bring this point over to this vertex. Something like this. And we're going to mountain fold along this edge. So I'm going to flip this over and make sure that this, this fold starts um, at this point here. Next, we're going to unfold and repeat the same thing on the other side. By the way, um, if you think my nails look a little rough, this is actually my first time painting them. So if you have any advice for how to make it better, I'd really appreciate that. Now we're going to make um, a valley fold perpendicular to this diagonal and where these two these two folds intersect like this you may need to look closely to make sure that you're getting it nice and accurate I think that's roughly correct so flip over and we're going to collapse, bringing these edges inward, like this. So two valley folds on either side like this, and mountain folds here. Um, there's going to be a lot of compound folds here, so um, it's a bit difficult to, de to describe with just words. So. Proficiency with certain advanced origami operations is highly encouraged for this model. Next, we're going to 
um, value fold this downward. But doing so, we're going to open the top layer like this and squash downward like this. Next, simply value fold in half upward and value fold down along this, these two regions here and here. I'm actually going to use my bone for this. Next, fold this downward and turn on the other side. Um, unfold this flap and we're going to locate a certain point um, specifically this point here. Uh, that didn't do anything, but hopefully you know what I mean. Um, and we're going to make a valley fold parallel to this line that intersects with that point we just located. Like this and check to make sure that it intersects with this point. Repeat above. So flip the model over and unfold these two flaps. And we're going to valley fold downward. Um, um, and our fold is going to start at this point and end at this point, like, uh, like this. We're now going to do a swivel fold. So release this paper here and um, valley fold downwards, connecting this point with this vertex, like this. And we're going to create a new valley fold here just by, just by squashing this downwards. So repeat on the other side, release this paper, and uh, fold downwards. Well done. And we're going to refold these creases. Next, we're going to fold another swivel fold. So change this crease here to a valley. And fold this valley fold here. Like this. So currently, we have this, and we're going to flatten by making um, a valley fold in alignment with this bottom edge. Like this. And you had another swivel fold. Make this crease here, this pre existing crease, a mountain fold. And make a valley fold along this angle bisector. 
So this will produce a new valley fold like this to flatten. So we're going to repeat on the other side. So the model will now look like this. And we're going to crimp this backside inward. So enforce these two mountain folds and make these two edges meet the center crease like this. And now we're going to pull out the middle flap that we just produced. Um, so these edges will now be in alignment with this crease. So it will, it will look like this. And we're going to make two reverse folds in the inside of the legs just to hide this little white part. It doesn't have to be perfect since this isn't going to be visible on the outside. But it should be something like this. Next, we're going to fold and unfold um, from connecting this edge and this edge here, like this, and repeat on the back. Next we're going to open this flap up and open sink. So we're going to sink this little triangle make the outside mountain folds. Like this, actually. Like this, and make valley folds on the inside. So we've now sunk this corner and repeat on the other side. freaking hot in here and there is no AC. So the model should now look like this. We're going to fold this entire thing upwards. Um, it'll be in alignment with this point here and it should also be a 90 degree angle here. I'm going to use this bone and unfold. And you might also wanna make this a mountain fold as well. Next, we're going to collapse the model. So um, open this up open the model up from this view here. And we're going to take it one crease at a time. So the blue lines represent mountain folds. These two are pre-existing. And we're, we're going to connect these two vertices with a new mountain fold here. And simply push this flap down like this. 
so the model will, will look like this after the collapse. So again, all at once, it looks like that. I'm switching over to 30 centimeter paper. So for the next step, we're going to make a mountain fold um, along here, connecting this point and this point. Repeat on the other side. Next, we're going to perform a large swivel fold. So open up this model like that and drag drag this portion forward until this point here meets this edge. So it will be like this and flatten as shown. Repeat behind. Next, we're going to valley fold the main. So I'll fold one flap forward, and it's going to be in alignment with this edge. Like this, and repeat on the other side. I made the same mistake twice, so I skipped this step. So what we're gonna do next is um, hold on to the top part of the model here and slide this over until it meets this point and flatten. Now that we've done that, we're gonna make another swivel fold at the top. So valley fold on the, along the angle bisector. And keep folding until it becomes easy to collapse like this. It's a bit hard to describe verbally, but it should look something like this. Repeat on the back. like this. Next, I'm going to unfold the main and fold along this angle bisector, connecting this edge with this one, like this. I'm gonna turn this one on the back into a valley fold. Like this. Now we're going to begin to collapse the head. So refold these two valley folds together. And we're not gonna flatten the head yet. Instead, orient the model as shown, and we're going to make two swivel folds um, on the head. So it will be something like first fold along the angle bisector. 
This part is a bit difficult, so I'm going to try to go slowly. So again, I'm valley folding along the angle bisectors. And it's difficult because the paper doesn't want to lie flat yet. But we're going to complete this swivel fold by valley folding down. The bottom edge of this little triangle here is also supposed to be perpendicular to this vertical edge here, but it's not super important. So next, we're going to um, we're going to valley fold along the angle bisector on the neck. Do not fold completely. Something like this, and we're going to eventually create a mountain fold somewhere along here. Um, it's a bit difficult to do this perfectly, but I'll try my best. Hmm. OK, this still isn't perfect, but do it to taste. Just um, the head is a bit difficult for this model, um, but something like this is OK, albeit not necessarily ideal. We're going to unfold the main. Next, valley fold the ear to the right. And this is going to create a swivel fold here. If we valley fold this long part downwards. So this little thing here is the ear. And valley fold the ear to the left. It's OK if your ear is bigger or smaller than the one on my model. It always turns out different every time for me. I'm going to do this again on the back. So a little swivel fold. And a valley fold. And valley fold the main downward again. It's going to go on top of the head like this, but behind the ear. So the model will look something like this. We're going to, we're going to shape the horn next. Um, so open up the head and valley fold upward as desired. And for the horn, we're going to make a little rabbit ear fold. The size of the head and the horn are completely up to you. I'm just doing it kind of at random. So once we've gotten to here, we're going to unfold. Um, I'm just going to reinforce this crease a bit. And next, we're going to open up these two flaps. And um, valley fold upwards around here. 
around the point we just made and valley fold downwards along this point here. Don't crease completely, just crease in the center. Next, swivel fold the sides. like this and going we're going to allow the horn to uh, rise upward while we um, while we valley fold along here and here so we're going to close the head like this um, I'm going to adjust these folds a bit because I'm not super happy with how it looks right now. But once you complete this collapse, it'll look something like this. The horn should be facing a bit upwards. I'm just going to try to adjust this. But yeah, again, the head part is a bit difficult. There's a lot of tiny, tiny details. but. Um, so it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Just try to shape it as you desire. Next, we're going to mount and fold the chest. So just mount and fold inwards like this. It doesn't have to be a super firm crease. Repeat on the other side. And holding the model like this, we're going to bring this flap into this pocket here to create a little lock like that. So, so the model will look something like this. Next, we're going to shape the tail, creating a crimp fold, first by valley folding rightwards as much as you want, and valley folding diagonally like this. Then unfold and change this to a crimp. Mountain folds here and here, and valley folds here and here. So once you close it up, the tail will look something like this. Next, we're going to just narrow the tail a bit um, by producing mountain folds along here. Like this. So the model will look something like this. And we're technically complete. There's some optional steps. You can, for instance, um, narrow the jaw by valley folding upwards. Um, usually, I like to narrow the jaw, but in this case, I prefer how it looks like this. Um, you can also shape the legs, the tail, and of course, the mane and you can twist the horn as well. But I'm going to leave it like this for now. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And I love you. Goodbye.